Typhoid fever, also known as enteric fever, is a potentially life-threatening infection. If you take a food that has the typhoid bacterial today and the number of the bacterial in the food is enough to cause infection, you will get infected if you are not vaccinated. In the next five days, you will not have any symptoms. This is the incubation period. Symptoms of disease develop 7 to 14 days after ingestion of the organism, meaning the first week of the illness is one week after ingesting the organism. Over the course of the first week of illness, a wide variety of abdominal symptoms of the disease develop. These include diffuse abdominal pain and pain when the abdomen is pressed. In some cases, the pain will be much in the right upper part of the abdomen. The swelling of the intestine will cause significant constipation that may persist for the duration of the illness. If untreated, the individual may develop a dry cough, headache, delirium, and severe malaise associated with marked stupor. Before proceeding to what happened in the second week of the infection, we need to know more about this disease. The classic symptoms of typhoid fever are high fever, headache, stomach pain, constipation or diarrhea. Fever characteristically comes in a stepwise pattern meaning the temperature rises and falls alternatively followed by headache and abdominal pain. Most people who have typhoid fever feel better about a week after they start treatment to kill the bacteria. But without treatment, there is a chance of death from typhoid fever complications. The disease course ranges from early abdominal distress to nonspecific general illness but ultimately may lead to multiple complications. Typhoid is said to spread by the 4F. 1. Flies. 2. Fingers. 3. Feces. 4. Vomites. The following are modes of transmission of typhoid. 1. Oral transmission via food or beverages handled by an often asymptomatic individual also known as a carrier who chronically sheds the bacteria through stool or, less commonly, urine. 2. Hand-to-mouth transmission after using a contaminated toilet and neglecting hand hygiene. 3. Oral transmission via sewage contaminated water or shellfish especially in the developing world. Remember that we have discussed what will happen in the first week without taking drugs. Now let's continue to the second week. During the second week, the fever continued to increase until it gets to the peak. The signs and symptoms earlier discussed continue to progress. The abdomen becomes distended and the spleen enlarged. In the third week, the still febrile individual grows more toxic and anorexic with significant weight loss. The eye become infected, the patient start breathing fast and the heart start running very fast. Abdominal swelling continue to increase. Some people will experience foul, green-yellow, liquid diarrhea called pea soup diarrhea. The individual may descend into the typhoid state, which is characterized by apathy, confusion, and even psychosis. At this stage, bowel perforation and spillage of the intestinal content occur. At this point, overwhelming toxemia, myocarditis, or intestinal bleeding may cause death. Most untreated people will die at this stage. Here is the surprising part. Some people will slowly improve over a few days. Abdominal and neurologic complications may still occur in surviving untreated individuals. Weight loss and debilitating weakness last months. Some survivors become carriers and have the potential to transmit the bacteria indefinitely. If the individual survives to the fourth week, the fever, mental state, and abdominal distension may reduce with long-term permanent neuropsychiatric complications. In untreated patients that survive approximately 10% will relapse and 4% will become chronic carriers. Now that you know what will happen to the body when typhoid is not treated, watch the next video to know if you are at risk of having typhoid, how to prevent the disease and how to get proper treatment. Please subscribe to our channel to get more tips on how to stay healthy. Thanks for watching.